Hello, I'm Jennifer Sure, Policy and Membership Development Officer at the Health and Social Care Alliance Scotland. And thank you for watching our next episode in our Alliance Live series, A Snapshot of Health and Social Care. Today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Emma Brown, Services Marketing Officer for Guide Dogs Scotland. So welcome, Emma. Thank you so much for joining us. So you're going to be speaking to us today about Guide Dogs Tech for All service. Um, but first, can you tell us a bit more generally about Guide Dogs and kind of what your aims are as an organisation? Yeah, so Guide Dogs across UK, we celebrate our 90th anniversary this year. Um, and for the last 55 years, we've had a base in Scotland. So it's an organisation that's been around for a wee while. Um, and over that time, we've definitely diversified our services. Um, and our current strategy is to aim to reach more people, so to reach more people with our range of services. Um, and that would be, you know, children and adults, and that's services that include our dogs and non-dog services as well. Um, and we're also able to support people's family and friends. So our ambition as a charity is a future where people with sight loss have the confidence and support that they need to be able to live their lives to the full. Thanks for that, Emma. 90 years. Um, I know. Ha happy anniversary. <laughs> um, I know. Can't say I've been around for the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, people would be kind of forgiven for automatically thinking really that, you know, your great work is just on, you know, guide dogs, but from what you said there are obviously numerous services beyond the dogs that provide um kind of support for people living with sight loss and like you said there they're you know family and friends and your tech for all service is obviously an example of this so am i right that you launched this new kind of technology offer in july this year yeah um, yeah yeah, so new. yeah. Can, can you just tell us a wee bit more about that then yeah so so like I mentioned, we do work with children and adults and Tech for All is also one of our, it's one of our non-dog services. Um, so we've launched in July and it is a pilot. Um, so it'll be running till the end of this year. Um, and Tech for All is an, it's an offer where guide dogs can give an iPad or an iPhone to a child with sight loss. Um, for, and that's free to the family so they don't need to, to pay for the phone or the iPad. And the age range, so it'll be children aged 3 to 18. Um, and anyone in that age range could apply for the iPad and the older children, so the 11 to 18 year olds, the secondary school age, they could opt to apply for the iPhone instead. Um, so it's, it's a really nice offer. And whilst a lot of children should have access to the technology they need at school to do their learning in school, not all children have the access at home. Um, so it's for a mix of things, you know, it can help support the child or young person with their learning. But it's also just an opportunity to, you know, FaceTime their pals or their gran um, or to play games on the iPad or to, um, like, if they like using the reading sort of apps on the iPad. And the iPhone as well can help with, you know, sort of skills that they, they might be developing anyway, like using the maps function to help learn to, to navigate round about outside as well. So really useful um, and a nice offer there for people who don't have an iPad or an iPhone at home. Um, I guess one of the, we've, we've had quite, quite a good uptake already, which is great to see. Um, and I think one of the real benefits for us has been, we'd, we'd hoped that families that were applying would want to find out a bit more about our other services that we can offer children and young people. Um, and we've been really pleased that about 50% of the applicants do want to find out more. So it's been a really great way for us as a charity to to reach an audience that we weren't reaching before and to engage with new families um, and to be able to offer our services to a wider group of people. We live in such a kind of tech driven time don't we and you know especially for for children and young people you know it's so important technology isn't it to kind of be involved in digital communities and like you say they're just kind of keep in touch with folks so yeah. um, I imagine that the service is well it's really making a massive difference for for, for kind of uh, children and young people in their lives. You mentioned there that there's been some interest as well um, on the back of Tech for All um, from people kind of interested in the other services that you have to support children. Um, can you tell us a wee bit more about that? Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's probably services that families and, and the public just weren't aware that we're providing. So you, know, you said earlier, you know, we're for 90 years and we're you know it's the iconic guide dog service and that's what our name is um so yeah whole whole range of children's services out there that we've been able to tell more people about because of this um so one of the 
One of the other newer services which we've got is for our younger age group, so zero to four, so that early years, um, and it's called My Time to Play. And it pretty much does what it says in the tin. It's, it's a play session for children in that age range of sight loss. Um, and we've run it virtually um, over COVID. And we're now at the point where we're looking to start face-to-face, -face, so in-person sessions, which we're really excited about because it's definitely something that would be, you know, I think the children would get a lot more from it, um, you know, in, in, in a group together. Um, and it's led by our habilitation specialists. So that's the staff at Guide, Guide Dogs who are trained um, to work with children with sight loss. Um, and they'll be just using stories and games and songs with the associated movements um, to help a group of children just kind of learn uh, these, these movement patterns um, and develop their confidence and their communication in a, in a group setting. Um, so as well as the, the kids, the parents are obviously welcome to come along as well and they get the peer support from other parents and siblings can come along as well so they don't miss out on the, the fun. Um, so the sessions are... It's a seven week block and we're hoping to run one in Edinburgh and one around Hamilton area um, and they would be good looking to start them in October time this year. Um, so yeah, definitely if there's anyone who knows children in that age range of zero to four, um, we'd love them to, to, to let them know about my time to play. The other thing that kind of goes along with it is we've got loads of resources on our Guide Dogs website that um, workers or families could use with children to, to do at home. Um, so we've got like a song book with some of the songs that they might use in my time to play um, and other sort of games and resources that are just there to try and help develop the children in that age range. Um, so it's really, really um, exciting to be working with kids that young. Um, so yeah, that's one of our, our newer services. Um, and some of the other ones we've, we've had for a while, but again, maybe just aren't as well known. We do offer custom made books for children with sight loss and that actually the age range is quite wide for that so that's children from zero up to, to young people of the age of 25 and we can make the book so any sort of title that's out there already we could custom make it to um you know like font size and spacing and color of paper and um, whatever the individual person needs um so there, there's four thousand books i think to choose from on our website um and we would charge the rrp price that that book would would usually be for sale for and um, so yeah not another nice service um and i suppose it would be unfair to have a, a chat with someone from guide dogs and as not to mention the dogs as well and <laughs> so i better give them their place so our, our, our iconic guide dog service we actually have no lower age limits for it so children and young people could apply for a guide dog as a mobility aid. Um, that being said, there's not, you know, there's not loads and loads of young people like children with guide dogs. I think our youngest guide dog owner is 14 in the UK, um, although we have trained children younger than that. So it's, it does very much have to be the right thing for the child, obviously with school involved as well. It's quite a, so there's quite a lot going on. Um, so it would definitely be a very thorough assessment to see if a guide dog was right for the child. Um, and that guide dog, its job is really there as a mobility aid. So it's there to identify any um, obstacles that are coming up for the person and, and steer them clear of it and to identify things like curbs and stairs so that the person doesn't trip over them. Um, but one of our, our other dog services um, is, is growing more popular with our children and young people, and that's our buddy dogs. So that's actually dogs which have been in our training program um, and they've been training to be a guide dog and for, for whatever reason, they've not quite made it. Um, so rather than us just automatically rehoming them and, and kind of, um, you know, them not being used for the purpose of helping people with sight loss, we can now give them to families where there's a child with sight loss. Um, so it's really, it's not, it's not a guide dog, so it doesn't, doesn't um, guide the child. It's really there as a pet dog, but the benefits are it's been through our training, so we can trust it's a it's a well behaved pet dog, and we know where the dogs come from and it's feeding, um, and we can offer the family support as well. So our buddy dogs, the sort of age range for children with sight loss that could apply is four to eighteen, um, or or younger people aged nineteen to twenty five with additional needs that didn't want to apply for a guide dog, and we're more just looking for a, a pet dog, um. And the, the benefits of them, and I suppose a lot of people who've, who've maybe got pets will know just the kind of um, the bond that you create and building your communication 
um, the, ch the child can sort of build on their, their sensory stimulation by things like grooming the dog and um, their independent living skills. Like if they have to weigh out the dog's food in the morning, they can use the talking scales to do that. So the dog can kind of become a, a sort of focus point to sneakily um, improve other things around without the child really realising that they're, you know, they're working on these skills. That's just part of their daily routine with looking after their dog. Um, so, yeah, it's a really, really nice. Um, really nice service the puppy dogs um, and the other thing that we were able to do before covid we usually have a, a family event once a year um, and we've, we've been to Blair Drummond Safari Park in the past and the Scottish Deer Centre and that's um, where we can get you know children with sight loss and their families all together and just have a, a fun day out and um, unfortunately we've not done it uh, this year or last year because of COVID um, but we're really looking forward to hopefully being able to get back to that as well. We do have services for adults as well and um, so we've got our, our guide dog service and we have volunteers that help people with sight loss get out and about too. You know, what struck me is that so many of your services for children and young people that you spoke about there you know my time to play and even you know the trips that you take to you know Blair Drummond and things they're they're really focused on you know play and joy aren't they and it's just so important I think for young people especially as I say after this year and a half um but just in general um kind of allowing them just space to just enjoy it's so important yeah and I think um our, our rehabilitation staff at Guide Dogs we've, we've got quite a few and they're you know they're so great with the kids and I think they you know they enjoy all this play sessions and stuff as well it's just everything's just good fun to be part of Oh, absolutely. Um, thank you so much, Emma, for, for joining us today to tell us, you know, about that kind of great range um, of work that you and the team do. Um, you know, for those that are interested in finding out more about the projects that you've mentioned there and the services that you provide, we will, um, if you watch the end of the video, we'll kind of link all that there. Um, so please do kind of follow up um, for more information with Guide Dogs. Lovely. Well, thank you so much, Emma. It's been lovely to speak to you today. Thanks for having me. And thank you uh, for watching this episode of Alliance Live, a snapshot of health and social care. See you again soon.